Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the roadmap towards excellence with Ecotex. Um, and just to get started today, uh, I'm, we're really happy you're joining us, and uh, we're glad that you're here to spend some time to learn a little bit more about the carbon and water footprint tool that Ecotex is launching. Uh, really, thanks. Thank you for taking your time to contribute today. We know your time is valuable, and it's uh, great that you're able to spend this time with us. I'm Amanda Martin. I'm head of our sustainability communications at Qantas, um, a sustainability consultancy, and I'll be your moderator today. So the webinar will be recorded, and you'll receive a copy of it afterward. So in case you want to go back and listen to something again, you will have that recording, and you can share with your colleagues as well. Um, and I just want to state to you the webinar we're using now is GoToWebinar, and there is a chat function where you can write your questions or a question area. And feel free to just type in any questions you may have throughout the webinar, and we will answer those um, at the end of the webinar and maybe a little bit in a few questions in the middle. So with that, I think we'll get started. So to start off today, we have a pretty packed agenda we're excited to take you through. Um, first, we'll go over um, a little bit about what the challenge is um, around carbon and water footprinting and what Step by Ecotex can do to help. And then we're going to go into a little bit more about why we're launching the carbon and water footprint tool. And then we'll look at what is behind, um, what is the methodology behind the tool. And we'll focus in on what the user experience is on the ground. And we're privileged today to have a guest speaker who has actually put this tool to use that we can hear from. And finally, we're gonna have some time for questions and answers at the end of the webinar. So again, please feel free to just write your questions in the question uh, box as we go along. So to introduce uh, our speakers today, I'm pleased to introduce Sunkev, who is head of business development at Ecotex, uh, Teresa, who is a senior sustainability consultant at Qantas and um, behind a lot of the, the, the tool we'll be sharing today. Uh, Sentil Nathan, who is joining us um, uh, from Atlas Export Enterprises as a sustainability manager. And finally, myself, I um, will be your moderator today also from Qantas. So just to kind of dive in a little bit about, um, and first to understand you, we'd like to do a quick poll. So you should be receiving a poll and we would like if you can just answer the questions. The first one is, um, what region of the world are you from? Okay, so go ahead and just mark what region, what region of the world are you joining us today from? Thank you for sharing. Great. So we can see here that um, about 75 of you, 75% of you are calling in from Europe, but we have a very big showing also from Asia Australia, so 15%, um, a few from North America, around 6%, and then a few from Africa, and then also from South and Central America. This is great. We have real uh, global representation. Thank you all for joining us today. And one more quick question, we'll, quick poll we'll pose, is to understand what um, position or functional area you work in. So in a second, you should see a second poll pop up. And if you can just mark one, um, one of the following that best represents, it may not be the exact title you have, but that best represents what um, kind of position or functional area you work in. Thanks for participating in these polls. It's always great to understand where everyone is joining us from. Okay. Thank you. 
And we see here, thanks again for responding. So almost half of you are from the CSR sustainability management function. We have a few from the executive team, uh, also from the facility or project management side, uh, quite a number from marketing communications, and a lot of you that don't feel like you fit into one of those boxes. <laughs> so around almost a third are in other. So that's great. Thank you for sharing today. Great, so just diving in a little bit about uh, why are we talking today about this and, and why is Ecotex working on this project? Um, it's really, uh, as you all know, uh, the fashion industry and the apparel sector is really growing and has a significant environmental footprint. So we see that um, the fast fashion segment has grown by more than 20% in the last three years and continues to grow. At the same time, we have around um, the, the apparel sector contributes to around 7% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so this means that with the continued growth, we will see an increase in the actual impact of, on greenhouse gas emissions across the apparel sector and textile sectors. And this is going to lead to a significant um, impact when it comes to global warming. So unfortunately, the fashion industry is not on track to limit global warming. Uh, if we want to really limit to this 1.5 degree um, pathway that was established by the 2015 Paris Agreement and the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, it is really important to try to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees to mitigate climate change impacts. And unfortunately, we see now that the fashion industry is not on the good path. Um, it would need to cut emissions by around half to 1.1 billion metric tons. However, with the current growth protect projections, we see that actually we're set to overshoot that target by a factor of nearly two. So around 2.1 billion metric tons of carbon equivalents by 2030. So this means that we really need to take action now. And on the other hand, we have a steadily increasing water risk. Um, water is of course um, uh, you know, a major input when it comes to the production of textiles. Um, it also is a big source of water pollution. And we see that um, the textile industry contributes to around 20% of industrial water pollution globally. And water usage is likely to increase by 21% uh, just by 2025. So this is a significant impact that um, we need to try and figure out how to uh, slow down and hopefully uh, stop. And when we look at the, the um, life cycle of uh, fashion, <clears throat> this was part of a study that was conducted by Qantas a few years back, um, measuring the impacts of the fashion sector across the different stages of the life cycle or across the value chain, we see that over 50% of impacts are actually in the three main stages, the dyeing and finishing, yarn preparation, and fiber production. This means that um, uh, production facilities have a really significant role to play to help reduce those impacts along the entire fashion value chain. Um, and this is really responsibility also for brands and retailers to affect change in their operations and to support their suppliers in the decarbonization efforts. And so it's really important here to kind of recognize where the impacts lie and try to understand how we can make some changes to improve those. So uh, another quick poll we have for you, uh, just to understand if your organization or if you're a consultant, maybe the organization you work with, measures currently measures environmental impacts such as carbon or water footprints. So again, you can answer for your own organization or if you are working with organ an organization, you can answer for them just to understand, and you can select more than one as well, if you're currently measuring um, and your environmental impacts through a corporate footprint, a product footprint, carbon footprint, or water footprint, or other. You can mark more than one. Uh, 
Okay, we can see if we get some results coming in now. Great, so this is great news. So we have um, around 40% of marked carbon footprint. Um, so that's great that you're currently measuring carbon footprint. Um, around 23% corporate footprint, uh, also product footprint. Water footprint is also good. So this is great. There's a significant portion of you that are currently measuring your environmental impacts. Great news. Great, and with that, thank you for your attention in the first part. I'll turn it over to Sanke to take us a little bit through the, the actual tool. Thank you, Amanda. Hi, I'm Zunke. I'm head of business development here at Ecotex. And um, I would like firstly give you a short introduction to that, what we are doing here at Ecotex uh, when developing our products. So since 1992, actually, it is our kind of mission to enable consumers and companies to make responsible decisions to protect our planet. And back then, it started with the Standard 100. I think uh, most of you are aware of this textile label. It is shown on the right bottom. And it stands for our mission um, of textiles for tested for harmful substances. So in order to yeah, keep um, back then initially um, the health and safety of the, of the people actually um, in mind and to focus on that. We also developed the leather standard and nowadays we're also happy to have made in green and to uh, establish in our portfolio, which is kind of, let's say, the most ambitious label uh, we have. It combines the safety part of the standard 100, respectively leather, with a supply chain perspective. We have also Eco Passport, and this is actually our certification for chemicals. So we're also working um, on the input control. And Eco Passport is also steadily increasing, and we're happy to see this development. Today, we will, uh, though, focus on the process perspective. So we will have a look, look into STEP, a short overview of what is STEP about, and then we will for sure learn more about the carbon and water footprint approach we are currently working on. What is Ecotex? Um, I believe most of you know us. However, for those who are not maybe familiar with us or not exactly know facts and figures, we are an association and uh, of consists of 18 different textile and leather institutes. And we are very happy to have this expertise um, of those institutes and their branches, um, especially uh, this was helpful for the development of this tool because we have experts around the world. So you can see we are covering uh, almost 100 countries. So we are, have the expertise on site in the different markets. And uh, this was actually very helpful when de developing the tool because we had the opportunity to simply reach out to um, either our internal experts in the Ecotex Association. And we also, as you can see, uh, are in touch with more than 20,000 businesses out there. So we have the direct contact to the customers, to the producers, actually. And this led to the quite significant number of uh, more than 230 certificates uh, issued so far by Ecotex overall um, yeah, in 2021 or until 2021. So I mentioned we will now talk about the supply chain perspective and about STEP and this advancement of the carbon water footprint tool. STEP, in a nutshell, is uh, yeah, very established and until now a very mature certification program, which consists of six modules. Um, so for sure, it, we will talk about today environmental performance and environmental management. But besides that, the other four modules um, are chemical management, quality management, social responsibility, and health and safety. 
So this is a holistic approach for um, leather and textile manufacturers. And our mission with this certification is that customers, in this case, those manufacturers, uh, do get a status quo evaluation, and then they can do their own um, corrective actions and they can increase their performance with regard to um, for sure sustainability aspects but also simply for health and safety for example so we want them to um, yeah actually increase their performance for example by introducing eco-friendly production processes and a great uh, side effect is actually yeah to make something good for the environment for sure for the nature for water bodies for um I don't know, animals, but also for the people. So we are trying to promote for sure the working conditions on site. And in best case, even in the community around this uh, manufacturer. And last but not least, we see STEP also as a tool, as an instrument for brands. So brands can simply use this STEP certification in order to, for example, monitor their supply chain activities to identify risks, et cetera, and also to do a transparent reporting. Our goal with the water and uh, the carbon and water footprint to tool is uh, quite obvious. I um, think most of you are also aware of the discussions around global climate change, and some of you might already uh, have heard also the Global Climate Action Carta by the United Nations. And we are very happy that uh, to hear that more and more facilities, more and more stakeholders, brands, etc., commit to such a uh, Carta. So their goal or the scientific goal of this Carta is to actually reduce greenhouse emissions um, 30% by 2030. And we as architects, we see ourselves as well as a stakeholder of this roadmap, as a contributor to this roadmap. We want to give uh, the industry again another solution to reach uh, this goal. And um, yeah, this is why we actually have the ambition to initially develop this tool and then also continue and advance it. Maybe shortly an introduction when we started. This actually, the whole project with Qantas, and we were very glad to that they uh, yeah, took the decision to, to work with us, started last year already. So uh, at first we came together, we discussed, okay, what is the concept, etc. So it was really about the methodology and Teresa will tell you more about that in a, just a couple of minutes. And then we, um, yeah, uh, it came, we came up with an Excel tool in the end um, where we have different processes, raw materials you can select, etc. We even did a testing. So you can hear from um, Sentinat and later on uh, from Atlas, from his first experience of the tool. But then, and today we are now in the phase of the proof of concept, uh, we're doing reviews, and also we are in the phase of the IT implementation. So this is actually the status quo of the, of the project, and we thought, okay, it is a good point to actually communicate this also to the outer world, to you, um, and get maybe your expertise, your feedback, your questions, your remarks, which will for sure help us also de to develop the tool in the future. The key goals of this tool for us are firstly to surely understand. So to um, bring the, our customers, the facilities in the position uh, with this simple tool to understand where are their carbon emission sources, sources or where are their water usage emissions and they can evaluate them at different stages of their production or within their uh, own production side actually so this goes along with identifying which processes have the highest environmental impact because this is actually then the next step okay let's see okay where are my major impacts and where is um yeah 
something I, I could improve. So um, is it the raw material or is it a certain process step or even any other um, perspective aspect I haven't uh, thought about? So we want to make them or this actually visible. Uh, we also expect from them to act. So take measures to reduce their carbon and water footprint um, right now in the future. So again, it should be an, a continuous improvement process. And last but not least, we uh, give them opportunity to report those measures um, either internally, externally, and as mentioned, even brands could use those reports, um, for example, across or for doing um, the supply chain evaluation of uh, across all their um, stakeholders or suppliers. So yeah, this was it from my side. And in a nutshell, um, we are very happy that we are at this point. Um, and yeah, again, we think that this uh, footprint tool can be a very tangible value for the supply chain partners. And uh, we want to bring those production facilities um, in the position that they can demonstrate leadership um, that they can uh, strengthen trust to their uh, partners. And in the end, we also see it as a, as a benefit for them. So even cost-wise, uh, it can be, and it, in the future, it has to be part of their business uh, to grow it, or at least to keep it steady and to design um, quite a sustainable future for their uh, actions. And with that, I will actually hand over to Teresa and I'm happy to hear more from you about the tool itself and the, and the background of it. Yes, thank you, Sanke. Uh, so as mentioned, my name is Teresa and I am one of the senior sustainability consultants working at Quantis. Um, uh, Quantis, just before we dive into the technical parts of what the tool is and how did we develop it together, I just quickly introduce to you Quantis. We are a sustainability consultancy, international sustainability consultancy with offices all over the world. Right now we are around 200 uh, consultants. Um, uh, Quantis started as a spin-off from FAFL, which is a technical university here in Switzerland uh, based in Lausanne. Until nowadays, most of us are either engineers or scientists, and we have an amazing communications team as well. And what we like to say is that uh, what we are trying to do is to build a bridge between the science and the businesses. So sort of to take the latest available methodologies and data and make sure that they are usable in everyday business, that they are easy to understand and easy to apply. Before continuing, um, I would like to uh, raise another poll and there is a very simple questions we would like to ask you to be able to explain the further steps. And the question is, how familiar are you with life cycle assessment as a method? So basically, um, you can select one of these options. Either you are not familiar with, with it at all, you never heard of it. We are somehow somehow familiar with it, so more or less you heard about it one time or the other. Familiar, very familiar, or you are an expert. Okay, so I see the results are all over the spectrum, but most of you are in the middle, so more or less familiar. We have few people which are not familiar, never heard of it, so I will do the basic introduction as well, but then I will stick sort of to the medium knowledge uh, kind of introduction. Mm -hmm. Yes, so what is life cycle assessment? It's a methodology which is by now quite well established, which is used to assess the environmental impacts of products and services throughout their whole life cycle. So what you see here, the, the sketch on the right hand side is basically a life cycle of uh, a piece of garment or a, a t-shirt, for example, or, um, uh, socks or pants. 
And what you do is you start with the extraction of raw materials, which in case of textiles, it might be the cotton, it might be flax, it might be the fossil, fossil based uh, fibers. You continue to manufacturing. Then, of course, throughout the entire supply chain, you have to account for packaging and distribution. Then you go to the use phase. So what is happening with the T-shirt? It's being washed, it's being dried. Uh, how often is being used? And then, of course, we have the end of life, which can be landfilling, reuse, recycling um, or incineration. Then the types of impacts we can look at throughout the whole life cycle vary a lot as well. It can be impacts on nature or human health. It can be impacts. It can be social issues as well. What we did in this particular case is we picked two types of impacts, which are the best, most established and best known, and that's carbon footprint and water footprint. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Um, we wanted to give you a little bit more of an insight on how did we actually executed the project, because it will help you to understand uh, what kind of data we used, what was the thinking behind the tool, what kind of people were co con uh, connected to the development of the tool to sort of give you an insight of, um, I would say, uh, technical and scientific rigorousness of, of the tool itself. So the first thing we did, we defined a scope and we defined what I would call uh, main guiding principles of what do we want to achieve with this tool. Uh, the most important guiding principle would be a credibility. So we wanted to make sure that the tool itself is credible, the results produced by this tool are credible, that we are using the latest science, the latest available data on environmental impacts within the textile uh, supply chain um, and so on. The two other principles were efficiency and simplicity. So we wanted to make sure that whatever tool we introduce to the facilities and to the environmental managers in these facilities is easy to use and in the same time efficient. So with the knowledge from the side of Quantis, we, we have a very strong expertise in environmental impact assessment. So we know what is going to be important. We know which data points are the most sensitive one and the ones which will then decide what is the final carbon footprint. So that we built the tool to make sure that you spend the time on the things which are important and you don't have to bother by other stuff which is not that important. Um, we then, the next guiding principles which we were guided by is transparency. So we are trying to document everything, all the data and calculations as much as possible and, and for the user to see basically how do we arrive to the results, to, to see exactly what the calculations are. The tool was not developed to be a black box where you put numbers and it will, it will just give you results. You should be able to understand the, the process inside. And the last guiding principles for us was an iterative approach. So what we are trying to do is we developed a tool which we think is a, it's a good prototype. It's a, uh, it's a solid tool which you can start using, uh, but we will be listening very closely to the feedback from the users. Um, on the user friendliness, on how easy or difficult it is to gather the data and what other kinds of point of view they would like to have from this tool. So the, it will be an, an iterative approach to make sure that we really get it right at the end based on what the industry needs. The second step was that we gathered input from various stakeholders. It was different experts from the different institutes of Ecotex we, we discussed with. So it was not just people who are used to modeling, but people who are going to the field. They know the facilities, they know, know the textile production, how it looks like and what are the pains and weaknesses and, and how we could basically use um, the best data which are available there. Together, we defined more or less 100 activities. We divided you know, the whole textiles production in 100 activities, such as dyeing and drying and fiber production um, to represent the whole uh, textile supply chain. From the side of Quantis, we identified the most important inputs and outputs. You need to be able to calculate carbon footprint. So you need to have the, the energy consumption, electricity, heat, water, uh, packaging, transport. Uh, so that was an input from our side. Step number three was that we wanted to select methodologies and standards we will be following. Here it's a bit of a challenge because STEP was designed for a facility, assessment of a facility. While there is a lot of uh, standards for corporate carbon footprint, so assessing a whole companies and corporations. And then on the other hand, we have a lot of standards for product uh, assessment. So when you are assessing uh, environmental impact for one piece of clothing. Here we were in the middle. Here we were doing an assessment of a facility. So simply what we did, we picked the best um, 
and sort of valid rules from all these standards and all these guidances to, to ensure that we are as close as possible to both the, the product footprinting guidance and ISO standards and the, the corporate ones. Step number four was very important as well. We needed to identify data sources we're going to use. One thing is to report that you are using electricity, but we then need to be able to say what is the carbon footprint of the electricity you are using? What is the contribution um, of, of this electricity? Uh, the databases we are using is on one side equipment, which is a very well established uh, data source for environmental assessment of products and services. On the other side, we have uh, WorldDB, which is a database developed by Quantis, which is specifically collecting data on activities in the textile sector. And we complemented these two databases with a knowledge from the Ecotex experts. So exactly those people which have years and years of experiences going to the factories, collecting the data and knowing exactly which technology has which kind of energy consumption and, and efficiency and so on. Uh, step number five was to develop a proof of concept. So basically we developed the tool, we, we fed it with all the data which we had, we tested it, we brainstormed together on how things should click all together. Um, it was a simple Excel tool. And step number six was to test the model. Ecotex had, um, I think, four or five uh, current clients which have a step certification to use this Excel tool um, and to give us a feedback on how difficult or, or easy it was for them to collect the data. Um, what was their experience using this tool? Whether the results which they uh, received from the tool are useful, whether they are easy to understand and so on. And step number seven, this is exactly what I already mentioned, is um, this tool is planned to be iterative, meaning uh, even after launch and after it starts to be used, we will be collecting more and more data from all the different people and, and data providers submitted, and we will improve the average background data in the tool. So in time, the accuracy of the data available in the tool uh, will increase. There was a lot of information. I hope <laughs> I hope it was medium uh, easy to digest. So at the end, what will a facilities get out of the carbon footprinting tool? It's very easy. You will get a carbon footprint, so kilograms of CO2 equivalent for your per your facility for one year of operations. So you will have basically one number for carbon footprint and one number for water footprint per facility per one year of operation. The next thing you will receive, you will have a um, carbon footprint for every step of the production within your facility. And this is one of the added values of this tool, which to my knowledge, not any other tool available right now has. So you'll be able to see, should we focus on improving this kind of process? Or should we, should we focus on improving that kind of processes? You will have the first sort of hotspots analysis, which will help you to, hide, uh, to, to guide these decisions. And the last but not least, you will have what is the average carbon footprint per one kilogram of material processed in your facility. Of course, different facilities are having different process steps and are processing different types of materials. So at the end, this, um, this average number per kilogram of material, it's unspecified one kilogram of material, but it's yet another additional information which you can use to basically make a plan into the future how to reduce your carbon footprint and how to optimize your water use. Next slide. Any questions? Yeah, so I, with that, I'll jump in. Thank you, Teresa, for walking us through it. Um, so there are just a few questions here um, from the chat. So I'll start, jump in with one which was, oops, hold on, let me see. So the first one is, um, what if a facility does not have data to report? Thanks. Um, there are some data which are mandatory. Uh, so for example, the amount of energy which you need in the form of electricity and heat to produce steam, this is the mandatory data which you need to enter to be able to calculate the carbon footprint. But for a lot of other data, we have uh, what I call the fallback option. So for example, if you know the amount of electricity used, but you don't know the, the source, you don't know how much is solar, how much is uh, you know, fossil fuels, burning coal, and how much is nuclear, uh, there is an average data per country available. So you just pick, I, I don't know, and we will automatically complement the information from the databases. All right, thanks for the explanation. 
And um, one more uh, question for you, Teresa, is will the facility footprint results be made publicly available? Um, no. At the beginning, uh, when you are getting certified by STEP, the data will be available only to you. So, so basically, you will have the data available and you will decide whether you want to make it publicly available or not. Um, this might change in the future, but it's not a default option right now. Okay, thanks. And one more question was around the difference between, you mentioned this, that the, that the tool actually integrates both um, product footprint and corporate footprint. Maybe there was a question to explain just a little bit more about the, the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Corporate footprint is a footprint for an organization or a company or a corporation, and it is governed by the so-called GHG protocol. So there are very defined, well-defined rules on what should be accounted there and what should not. Um, the, the operation of the facilities, it's part of that. So if you have a company which owns facilities, you would account it in your corporate footprint. But since we are, this tool is only per facility, there are other things in the corporate footprint which we are not taking into account. For example, there is a business travel and employee commuting. So these additional things we don't do for the facility assessment. We really focus only on the processing. Yeah. Great. Okay, thanks for the explanation. I also have a question for Sanke, if uh, you can come back on. Um, one question was specifically, if this tool will become part of the STEP certification or auditing, or if it will be a separate label offered by Ecotex? Good question. Um, it will initially be part of the STEP certification. Um, I mentioned we are right in the beginning phase. So, and we started the, the testing with some step customers and also the beta testing, the IT testing, the proof of concept will, de will be done with step customers. Um, so for now, it will not be an extra label. Um, it is an, kind of an add-on, um, even for those step customers, it will be initially an, an option uh, to do so because we also know that it takes time to actually gather the data and to, to fill out the tool. We want to make it as easy as possible. Um, but yes, this is actually the status quo. Uh, let's see how it evolves um, and whether we will stick to this, whether we will open it up. Um, this is something we are happy to, to inform you um, how we are going to approach this in the future. And if the demand is as uh, high as we hope, um, then um, this might be also an option. Great, thanks. And one last question before we jump to the next part. Um, what if uh, some facilities would like to test the tool? Can I, I, I can tool? take this one as well. Yeah, um, this actually refers to, to my uh, answer uh, just given. Um, we initially make this available for the step customers uh, who can test it and they can simply uh, apply via uh, an application form on our website. It is already available. So on the Ecotex website, you find step there, and there's even an extra uh, site for our um, carbon footprint tool where you can find a video, where you can find all the information, or at least hopefully all the information you, you need. And you can also um, sign up as a beta testing um, facility for yeah having fun with the carbon water footprint tool. Great. I'm sure it's very exciting. <laughs> so with that, let's let's turn it over and hear from someone who has tested it. So I'd like to invite Santil Nathan if you're there. Hopefully we got the the webcam and audio working. Great. Yeah, it's Hello. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. We're very happy to have you join us. So I will let you um, explain a little bit Hello. about the, the company you're coming from, and uh, and then. Amala, now, could you hear me? Yes, we can hear you fine. Yes. Okay, so you can go ahead and explain about Atlas. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Amanda. Thanks for providing the opportunity. And um, I would like thank to introduce you. myself. Uh, I'm Sintan Nadan. I'm Sintan Vujiraj. I'm working as a manager of sustainability and compliance in Atlas Export Enterprises, which is located in the southern part of India. I'm audible to you. Yeah, okay. And I have rich experience in textile and sustainability, and I have actually qualified ISO 14001 and ISO 9001 and ASA 8000 standard. 
and I have the vast experience in uh, textual chemical and genetic acid chemical management system. <clears throat> I would like to brief about my company. This is my company, Atlas Export Enterprises, shortly called Atlas. And Atlas is 42 years old concern, and my chairman uh, is Mr. Uh, M. Nashmuthu, and my managing director is uh, Mr. N. Sintil Prashan. And we are manufacturing and exporting home textile products um, to various countries. We have more than 50 clients um, over the world, and which is a major client is Tesco, H&M, Lidl, Aldi, uh, Migros, Coop, Inditex, so all the brands we are working with. And we are having vertical setup facility um, with bone dyeing and uh, printing uh, unit and manufacturing unit. We are having 2,500 employees in our units, as well as from sustainable parts. We have implemented uh, jetty plant in our processing units, and we are using the water more than 95% recovery from jetty plant uh, for the uh, water footprint we are using that. And uh, the facility operating more than 50% of renewable energy, such as solar and wind uh, circle and we have planted more than 500 trees over the uh, units uh, to reduce the carbon footprint under Miyawaki system. This is about my concern. Next slide. Great, thanks. Uh, thanks for, for sharing a little bit about Atlas and maybe I can just ask you a few questions here to about your experience yeah. using the, te the, the, um, the STEP tool. Um, maybe you can explain, I'm sure a lot of our listeners are really curious to hear what was the experience. Can you just tell us a little bit about what was your experience? How was it to use the tool itself? And enter the data too. Um, hardly we could uh, collect the details within a day because all the consumption Oddly, uh, um, we could collect the details within a day and uh, we could enter the data within a few hours because the tool is very easy to use and enter the data and got quick insight into the hard spot to understand the process and uh, as well as the footprint. And definitely uh, it's value added to our facility too. Um, uh, because initially we have calculated high level CO2 emissions factors using various emission scopes. But now in this tool, you can easily to use to enter the data and to know about your carbon and water footprint instantly. And it's more credible calculations uh, to get more credible calculation and specific uh, CO2 emissions, we could uh, know about that. And it gave first time insight on emission and water impacts by processing steps. It was inspirational to see comparison of produced um, produced goods with raw material purchased. It means the one kg product of impact of water and energy consumption list. Uh, the one kg of uh, produ uh, produce the production uh, footprint analysis, we can able to get it. And finally, um, we could identify and know about real environmental cost for our energy and water consumption. And uh, this clarify where we have to take the action to improve our sustainability part and where we are lacking in the sustainable part we could easily know about in the footprint so the tool is very easy to use and within the two pages we can include all this uh, uh, consumption list too great it sounds like there is a lot of uh, benefits of the tool maybe just yeah. uh, one one moment on the the previous slide i wanted to ask you um, what, were there any challenges to using the tool? Pardon? I'm sorry? Were there any challenges to using the tool? Um, I don't think so, the challenges, uh, but at the same time, we have to collect the data from our different departments because every unit have a different departments of electricity and consumption of uh, handling the solar panels and wind and uh, water consumption. So each and every departments have the consum consumption list uh, in different uh, uh, departments. So uh, the one thing, the challenge is we have to collect the consumption list from each department. This is not a challenge, but all the facilities have their consumption list definitely actually. Great, thanks for sharing. Okay, and maybe moving on then, I was curious, you know, as this tool can be used by many facilities across the industry, what would you say are the benefits really at an industry level for using this tool? 
yeah it's really interesting the tool and it helps to educate the facilities actually the potential for the industry uh, value for the carbon and water footprint tool for the textile industry um, it's come for the cost saving factor too first of all it's come for the cost saving factor identify the area of cost leakage where the cost is leakage whether the energy whether the uh, water whether other um, fuels uh, the, like the diesel and other things whether where the cost leakage we could identify easily it's a potential for the industry to know about the loss where it's happened and it's helped to educate the facilities how to become sustainable and identifying hotspot operation and raw metal use and will enable business to grow provide better uh, relationship with the customers because meeting the sustainability reporting needs to brand needs to provide to brands and improve sustainability access too great on that note i wanted to ask you what has been the reaction of your customers, so the retailers and brands you work with? Have you been able to talk with any of them or share the results of the tool with any of them? Yes, uh, some of the tools we are uh, customers who are requesting some of the tools, but the tools are quite, uh, I felt that the tools are uh, quite um, uh, uh, brief about the tools. We have to get the data and the glossy data and arrive the data. It's quite high actually. But in this tool, we have only the two pages. We have to enter the data, uh, collect the data, and enter the data. Within few hours, we could know about the carbon footprint and water footprint, how much in the industry, and instantly know about the um, uh, process uh, uh, leakages actually. Okay, great. And it, do you no think need that to wait. To uh, the one to know about where the consumption is going, where the how much the energy and water is, where the leakages, cost leakages are going. So instantly we could know about from the tool. This is a Perfect. benefit from the tool actually. Great. And what about um, for your customers? Do you think this is also a benefit for them? That uh, what is the value for for your customers, the retailers and the brands that you work with? Um, yes, nowadays all the customers who are talking about the climate change because the climate change is the most important factor uh, to the current scenario. Um, so to reduce the climate change, we have to analyze where we are in the sustainable uh, factor. So then only we can able to um, move and fix the goal uh, to reduce the carbon and food, carbon and water footprint to sustain in the world. So the climate change is the big impact going to in the brands as well as the world. So we have to move towards to reduce the carbon and water footprint, definitely. Great. And um, maybe one last question for you, um, or maybe two, if I could. <laughs> one is, what would you hope would be the outcome of future developments of this tool? Yes, yeah, so, uh, future development about, uh, um, because we could know about the current scenario of the carbon and water footprint, and we could set the goal to reduce, how we can reduce the uh, footprint, and we know about how the cast leakages, whether the energy or the water consumption, so it's definitely uh, it will help us to future to uh, know about the uh, uh, cost savings factors for the facility okay and last question what advice would you give other facilities who would be considering using the tool anything any advice you would uh, give them yeah, definitely I would recommend the tool because uh, the tool uh, don't having uh, that much of paragraph asking that much of uh, consumption, that much of uh, strategy asking. There's no nothing like a tool. You have to only enter the data. So then you can arrive instantly the carbon and water footprint from the tool. So this is a quite simple tool to know about where we are. And instantly we could know about where we the environmental impact at the facility. So definitely I would prefer the tool uh, to other facility uh, to you to know about carbon water footprint to reduce it also. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing with everyone. Um, maybe we can uh, go to the general question and answer. So you can keep your your camera on if you want, and I can invite Teresa yeah. and Sanka to you. come back as well. And um, let's see. We have the first question here is for probably, maybe, I'm not sure if it's for Teresa or maybe for Sonka, but the question is, do you rank the results of the carbon and water footprints of the facilities to be comparable? I can take this one. Um, yeah. In order to be able to do that, uh, in order to be able to do benchmarking, you need to have um, uh, a good amount of data. So you need to, you know, in, if you want to calculate averages and you do it from two numbers or three numbers, not very, uh, solid. 
So right now it's not going to be done because we first need to have the solid base. We need to have enough data to be able to calculate industry averages. For example, what is the average impact of, of dying? Um, but it's something we are really discussing and would love to do in the future. Great. Um, and um, kind of maybe building on that a little bit, would you plan to share the footprint results with brands? I must I'll answer. Definitely we need to share because it could understand our environmental impact as well as the climate change uh, for the client. So definitely we need to share our carbon footprint and water from the client to know about our environmental impact and uh, impact uh, in the industry. That's great to hear, Santi and Nathan. I, I can certainly simply uh, promote that from Ecotech side, we are a huge fan of transparency and um, we want to, yeah, actually, um, how we ask each and every customer of us, especially step customers, to be transparent, to um, talk about their, yeah, even maybe their gaps, uh, but also about their corrective actions and what they are doing great so far already and what they are, their plans are. So um, and we encourage them always to, to show what they're doing. And um, this also applies to the, the carbon water footprint um, tool or the result in the end and the report. And, um, and sharing this to brands or other stakeholders, it gives them a value. They can, again, um, have a look, a holistic view look on their, for example, supply chain, and this then adds up to, uh, in, in best case, actually improve, yeah, efficiency and and um, um, performance across the industry, right? Great, thank you. Thanks um, for your answers. Building on that a little bit, um, I know Santel Nathan mentioned how this is really one of the benefits is the educational aspect. Um, maybe also Sanke, if you could address that as how you see. Um, the benefit of this tool in terms of educating and raising awareness around um, carbon and water footprinting as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, I could also um, ask ask Teresa to do so. You're the expert in terms of, of LCA actually, and you're in touch with all other different also industries um, and doing awareness raising actually. By doing that, by developing and talking about this, we do awareness uh, raising already. Um, again, when communicating with the results to the outside world, uh, we're doing the same. Um, so awareness raising is always, or yeah, has always been part, of, especially of the STEP program, because once we ask questions, please tell me this and that information, uh, please give me this and that data. By that, we, we I think, raise awareness um, on site, but in the end also, um, yeah, uh, in the industry and uh, publicly. Hmm. Hmm. I would just add to it that um, what we what we get quite often as a as a sustainability experts is that people tell us uh, life cycle assessment is too complex. It's too difficult, complicated, and people don't know how to handle it. And then when they try, we often see that uh, indeed they make things which you know from an expert point of view, ah, this is not what it's supposed to be done, right? Um, so, uh, for example, that they focus on the wrong things. And I, and I always compare, you know, it's like an airline company which will start promoting that they are using recyclable cutlery on the planes. Uh, you should not be spending time on that. You should be spending time on the efficiency of the, of the engines of the plane, right? And so what we try to do with this tool is basically simplify it to the, you know, to the, to the simplest things to, to, to bridge the, the, the notion that the life cycle assessment carbon footprint thing is difficult but in the same time, make sure that the, the facilities focus on the right things. So they don't spend, you know, days and days of trying to gather data on different types of carton being used. This is not where you should be spending your time. You should be spending your time on, uh, you know, key hotspots and making sure that you can you take an action, you can take the next steps. Great, thanks for answering that. I have um, one more question that's, I think, by for Teresa. Um, will the tool be able to calculate effects of external changes? For example, something like changing the boiler heating method or adding a secondary electricity source via solar panel? Yes, uh, very good question. 
<laughs> um, for now, no. So this is exactly what we did right now is we are setting up the baseline. So you say, okay, my electricity right now is this and that. But this would be absolutely an amazing next, next step. And this is exactly why we said, you know, the tool is going to be iterative. This is one of the feedbacks we are listening to, because indeed it would be cool to have scenarios. You say, okay, this is today, we are, this is where we are. But, and we know that the hotspot is, you know, the, the boiler, for example. If and the scenario, okay, in the future we change from this boiler to that boiler, what would be the consequence? Will my carbon footprint lower by 10%, 20, 30, 40, um, and so on? So again, not part of the tool right now, but would be amazing feature for for the future. Great. Um, if anyone has any final burning questions, you feel free to write them in the in the questions in the chat. Um, in the meantime. Um, any last um, comments maybe about uh, further improvements that you anticipate having for the tool? It could be, I guess, for, for each of you, maybe. Do you wanna, um, who wants to start with that one? I mean, I can start based on, on the answer that Teresa just gave. I mean, this uh, we have different and several ideas and we talked about, okay, how we can develop it. Um, and then at some point we had to say, okay, let's start with a very yeah a minimum approach and then in the future iterative we can we can extend the the scope of this tool um one vision Teresa just mentioned putting scenarios in um another vision of um, myself is maybe we could even expand it to two articles right now we are talking about the facility um why not extend it to um, make it yeah per each and uh, every article i think uh, i believe this is also the future uh, when yeah talking about uh, for example the path project or um, uh, any other projects out there so there's yeah, uh, many many more to come i guess either from us or together with uh, yeah interested parties out there together as as a community Great. But, if I could just, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I guess Sentir Natan has something in, in mind as well. I think you're on mute. <laughs> okay. Um, in the meantime, uh, I think we're just about at time. So I had one more burning question. Uh, this would be for Sunke about the made in green label and if there's plans to have a carbon and water footprint associated at the product level yeah this is actually uh, what i just mentioned uh, this could okay. be another approach um we are um yeah more than in the in the idea phase let's say um we have the the plan to do that um but we also know we are in touch with with Qantas uh, on that um, that it is right, yeah, very complex. Uh, Teresa, correct me if I'm wrong, but it might be even more complex than this tool. But um, this tool for facilities can now be actually yeah, serve as a basis for um, the next step. And uh, this could and will be the one for, for Made in Green then to include it uh, there as well. Great. Okay. Well, with that, I think we're at time. So um, I just want to thank all of our panelists again for your participation. Really appreciate it. And thank you to all of our listeners today. Again, you will receive a recording of this webinar if you want to go back and rewatch or listen to part of it. Um, and just wanted to also highlight that we are still in the beta testing um, step of the Ecotex uh, step program for the carbon and water footprint. So please make sure to contact um, Ecotex or your testing institute if you have further questions. And um, we are very happy to have you with us today. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.